Welcome to Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School Lesson for Sunday, August 29th, in the year of our Lord, 2021. I am Rev. Mary Tillman, and I will be your presenter for today. Our summer quarter study has been Confident Hope. We're in Unit 3, Faith Gives Us Hope. Lesson 13 today is the last lesson in this unit. The lesson title in the Standard Lesson Commentary is An Eternal Hope. In the Faith Pathway Bible Studies for Adults, the lesson title is Be Confident. Our devotional reading is Romans, the seventh chapter, verses 14 through 26. The background scripture, 2 Corinthians, chapter 4, verse 16 through chapter 5. And verse number 10. The print passages of our lesson for today, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 16 through 18, and chapter 5, verses 1 through 10. I will be presenting the lesson today from the New Living Translation Bible. Our key verse for today's lesson is the first verse of the fifth chapter of 2 Corinthians, and it reads like this from the NLT version of the Bible, the New Living Translation Bible. It says, For we know that when this earthly tent we live in is taken down, that is, when we die and leave this earthly body, we will have a house in heaven, an eternal body made for us by God himself and not by human hands. Let us pray. Father God, thank you for the opportunity to study your holy word. Please open our understanding so that we may walk by faith, be confident in our faith, and practice your teachings in our daily lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This is our last lesson in unit number three. Faith gives us hope. These lessons on faith and hope should be encouraging to all of us. We live in a difficult world in which many people struggle under weight of all kinds of pressures. Knowing God's heart toward us, however, gives us confidence to approach him with the pure, innocent trust of a child and the certain hope that our troubles are only temporary. Christians are not blind to the evils of the world. We see them, and the way we can avoid that dark influence is because we also see the Lord's way, the way of faith based on evidence. Proverbs 3 and 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. Christians walk by faith in God, not by what we see or think. Faith is essential for the hope of eternal life. So my brothers and sisters, get your Sunday school book, Bible, pen, and notepad, and follow along as we go forward with this lesson. Let's get started. Three questions for you to consider. Question number one, what does Paul say about our present afflictions and how Christians should respond? Question number two, how does the Apostle Paul describe our earthly bodies in comparison to our resurrected bodies? And question number three, what's going to happen when we stand before the judgment seat of Christ? Let's look at the lesson's biblical context. The church at Corinth was founded on Apostle Paul's second missionary journey, and we find that in the book of Acts chapter 18, verses 1 through 18. The city of Corinth was the economic and commercial hub of ancient Greece. Corinth was a pagan city, but Paul, unintimidated, came preaching and teaching about Jesus the Christ, and he established a Christian congregation. The Apostle Paul writes this second letter to the Corinthian church from the vantage point of first-hand experience. 
sharing his insights regarding the ultimate benefit of temporary afflictions in the life of the believer that work what he called a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. And we find that in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17. Paul challenged his readers to persevere through life's peaks and valleys, successes and failures, with an unshakable hope and faith, knowing that we have an eternal possession and glory. Paul wrote that we must not faint, but move onward and upward by God's sustaining, renewing presence. The Apostle Paul reminded the Christians at Corinth that they must never lose heart and become discouraged, for we know that ministry is not always easy, but in spite of how things look, we must remain positive because we are the messengers and the carriers and the doers of God's word. Paul encouraged the faithful to stay committed to the truth and reaffirmed his deep love for them. Paul reminded the church at Corinth also that they must remain vigilant because the trials they had to endure were only temporary, light afflictions when weighed against glory of eternity. In other words, Paul was saying in keeping our eyes on the glory of heaven, we can endure our present suffering. Those of us who belong to the family of God will be judged by God for all the things done in our earthly bodies, both the good and the bad. Life's ups and downs causes us to have both victories and defeats, but through it all, we must remain steadfast and immovable as we do the work the Lord Jesus Christ has commanded. This week's lesson's aims are... As a result of experiencing this lesson, you should be able to do these things. First, acknowledge the hope that Paul, when faced with death, manifested in God's eternal promise. Second, experience awe in the faith of family and friends who are facing their mortality. And third, develop a growing trust in God's promise of eternal life through faith. There are three lesson outlines in the Adult Pathway Sunday School book. I will share two key points from each of these outlines and expound some on each of them. The first outline is focus, and we'll find that in 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, verses 16 through 18. The second outline is forecast, and we'll find that in 2 Corinthians, chapter 5, Verses 1 through 5. And the third outline is future fate. And that is in 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter, verses 6 through 10. Let's look at outline number one, focus. 2 Corinthians 4, 16 through 18. From the New Living Translation, it reads, That is why we never give up. Though our bodies are dying, our spirits are being renewed every day. For our present troubles are small and won't last very long. Yet they produce for us a glory that vastly outweighs them and will last forever. So we don't look at the troubles we can see now. Rather, we fix our gaze on things that cannot be seen. For the things we see now will soon be gone. But the things we cannot see will last forever. Key point number one. Paul offers words encouragement to the suffering saints. Paul himself had faced many struggles, trials, and sufferings, but he knew that one day they would all be over. There is a song that says, I'm so glad trouble don't last always. And then there is another one that says, soon I will be done. With the troubles of this world, I'm going home to live with God. Paul reminded the saints that in the work of ministry, we must never lose heart. Romans 8 and 18 from the New Living Translation Bible says, Yet what we suffer now is nothing 
compared to the glory he will reveal to us later. That is good news, my brothers and sisters. Paul spoke firsthand because he had been beaten, jailed, shipwrecked, and more. Yet he describes these tribulations as light afflictions. Can you imagine? How do you classify the things that you are going through? Key point number two. Believers are exhorted to look beyond this present age and world to that which is to come. Paul encourages the believer by reminding them of the temporary duration of afflictions. Even our worst experiences, he says, only endure for a moment, as stated in verse 17. Paul reinforces his point by explaining that such affliction actually works on the Christian's behalf to produce a future glory that ultimately outweighs the weight of our suffering. In verse 18, Paul distinguishes between what is earthly and that which is heavenly, that is, what is temporary and that which is eternal. He says so, he says, so we don't look at the troubles we can see now. Rather, we fix our gaze or our eyes on things that cannot be seen. For the things we see now will soon be gone, but the things we cannot see will last forever, and we realize that eternity is forever. Paul also realizes that he is in a temporary state. He focused not on the present but the future, not on the seen but the unseen. Brothers and sisters, we need to do the same thing. We're passing through this land of sorrow on our way to a home where we will never grow old. It is important that we not focus so much on the present, but for the future. We need to send up our timber every day because one day we're going to check out of here. Let's look at outline number two. And it is entitled Forecast. And we'll find that in 2 Corinthians, the 5th chapter, verses 1 through 5. And I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. For we know that when this earthly tent we live in is taken down, that is, when we die and leave this earthly body, we will live in a house in heaven, an eternal body made for us by God himself and not by human hands. We grow weary in our present bodies, and we long to put on our heavenly bodies like new clothing. For we will put on heavenly bodies. We will not be spirits without bodies. While we live in these earthly bodies, we groan and sigh. But it's not that we want to die and get rid of these bodies that clothe us. Rather, we want to put on our new bodies so that these dying bodies will be swallowed up by life. God himself has prepared us for this, and as a guarantee, he has given us his Holy Spirit. And you will remember, Jesus said he had to go away so that the Comforter would come. The Comforter, my brothers and sisters, is his Holy Spirit. Key point number one. Paul contrasts our earthly bodies to our future resurrected bodies. Our earthly bodies are referred to as a tent, and a tent is temporary. Over time, with usage and wear and tear, it begins to fade, it sags, and it deteriorates. Just as it is with our earthly bodies, our bodies are decaying daily. There's a song that says, this old building keeps on leaning. I've got to move to a better home. It goes on describing how our eyesight is getting dimmer, our footsteps are getting shorter. No matter how much we exercise, we or how much exercise we get, or how much healthy foods we eat, sooner or later our physical bodies are going to break down. These bodies were not made to last throughout eternity, but our heavenly bodies are. Paul talks about our resurrected bodies not being made by the hands of man. We will have newly resurrected, glorious heavenly bodies, perfect for everlasting life. Our resurrected bodies will be better than we can even imagine. They will be perfect without sickness, without disease, without pain. 
I want to live in a building, Albertina Walker says, not made by man's hand. And one of these days, my brothers and sisters, if we live right, we will spend eternity in heaven. For there is a mansion, Jesus told us, that in his Father's house there are many mansions. Verses 2 and 3 reminds us that although our, our humanity exposes us to pain, we can rest assured that when we pass from humanity to immortality, we will no longer be vulnerable to the difficulties experienced in this life. Verses 4 and 5 says to us, While we live in these earthly bodies, we groan and sigh, but it's not that we want to die and get rid of these bodies that clothe us. Rather, we want to put on our new bodies so that these dying bodies will be swallowed up by life. God himself has prepared us for this as a guarantee here he has given us his Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit within us is our guarantee that God will give us everlasting bodies at the resurrection. Paul was not afraid to die because he was confident of spending eternity with Christ. Paul drives home the point that death for the believer is not something to be dreaded or feared. For those who believe in Christ, death is only a transition to eternal life. Let me say that again. For those who believe in Christ, death is only a transition to eternal life. The only way we can gain eternal life is we have to die on this side in the physical in order to be present with the Lord in the spiritual. Outline number three, future fate. And we'll find that in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 6 through 10 from the New Living Translation Bible. It reads, so we are always confident, even though we know that as long as we live in these bodies, we are not at home with the Lord. For we live by believing and not by seeing. Yes, we are fully confident And we would rather be away from these earthly bodies, for then we will be at home with the Lord. So whether we are here in this body or away from this body, our goal is to please him. For we must all stand before Christ to be judged. We will receive whatever we deserve for the good or evil we have done in this earthly body. My, my, my. Key point number one. Christians are to continue to labor and work until God's plan for them is complete. Paul wanted to please the Lord. He wanted him to say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. And we'll find that over in Luke, the 19th chapter and verse number 17. And when we look at verse number 10, the believer's ultimate goal, the ultimate goal should be to please God in life and in death. For truly God is too good for us not to want to please him. When we look around and see all the things that he has done for us, why wouldn't we want to please him? He gives us life. He gives us life more abundantly. And let's look at key point number two. Everyone will stand before God to receive a just reward for the deeds of our lives. Matthew 16 and 27 says, For the Son of Man will come with his angels in the glory of his Father and will judge all people according to their deeds. My brothers and my sisters, no matter who we are, no matter where we live on this earth, there is a day of judgment coming. And Matthew 16 and 27 just told us that the Son of Man, that's Jesus Christ and his angels, in the glory of his Father, is coming and will judge all people according to their deeds. Whatever is done in this lifetime, we are going to be judged by the righteous judge himself. Salvation is not the issue here. God gives us grace but still holds us accountable before him in faithful obedience and service. Salvation is a free gift, but every believer is going to be judged by how he or she lived in obedience or disobedience 
according to God's commands. We're not going to be judged for our sins, but for the deeds we have done in this body. Oh yes, everybody is going to stand before the judgment. In summary, are you ready to appear before the judgment seat of Christ to receive your just reward? Believers can be assured when life reaches its conclusion, God has a more glorious future in store, an eternal future that will never fade away. Having faith in God gives us hope to persevere in life and reminds us that for the Christian, the life to come is far better than this one that we have right now. You think you have a good life now? Oh, my brothers and sisters, the life to come is far better. Having this assurance, we must work diligently for Christ while we are in these temporary bodies, knowing that God sees and remembers everything that we do in his name. We should strive to please God every day, not some of the time, but all of the time. Paul challenged his readers to persevere through life's peaks and valleys, successes and failures with an unshakable hope and faith knowing that we have an eternal possession in glory. Paul wrote that we must not faint, but move onward and upward by God's sustaining, renewing presence. Romans 8 and 18 says, Yet what we suffer now is nothing compared to the glory he will reveal to us later. We must remain faithful and persevere during difficult times and hold on to our faith. And remember that truly the best is yet to come. 1 Corinthians 2 and 9b from the New Living Translation Bible says, "I has No eye has seen, no ear has heard, and no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. Again, that's 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Verse number 9b from the New Living Translation. No eye has seen or ear has heard. We can't even imagine what God has prepared for us. And then another verse I want to share with you, my brothers and sisters, that locks in very beautifully with this lesson is 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, verse number 58 from the New Living Translation Bible. So, my dear brothers and sisters, be strong and immovable. Always work enthusiastic for the Lord, for you know that nothing you do for the Lord is ever useless. The song by Douglas Miller kind of sums it up. It says, kind of speaks on Paul's behalf. I've learned how to live holy. I've learned how to live right. I've learned how to suffer. For if I suffer, I'll gain eternal life. But when I see Jesus, amen. But when I see Jesus, amen, because all of my troubles, all of my heartaches, all my disappointments will all be over. But when I see Jesus, the son of the living God, my joy and sorrow, my hope for tomorrow, when I see Jesus, amen. Thank you for your time this time and remember to study God's word for the grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Let us pray. Father God, thank you for this lesson on being confident. Help us to remain faithful to the work you have designed and destined for us. Help us to draw others closer to you as we serve you with confident hope of spending eternity in your presence. It is in the name of Jesus that we do pray. Amen, amen, amen.